those people over there who can't afford what I can afford. Today, I mean, all you have to do is read the national newspapers and you see Austin as one of the markets that's just gone crazy with a, what, a median home price of now half a million or something? When I was invited to help design the affordable plan for the Miller Fund, for, for the Catellus and Miller development with the city and Catellus, I was really excited because uh, at the time I was working at NeighborWorks American, we were actually doing a series of seminars and symposiums about mixed income housing. It was the early 2000s and it was a very new form of development. And the Decades of American development had been, you put the $150,000 homes here, you put the $250,000 homes here, right? It was income segregated. And that's the way the housing finance system worked. The old ways of developing mixed use and mixed income, you know, if you drive through old neighborhoods, things are kind of more jumbled up. That was gone in American development. If you create a society where you've segregated people by income, people don't get to know each other. People don't just interact with each other. People start thinking of people as others. Those people over there who can't afford what I can afford. Or those people over there for, who are so rich and are so different from me. But when folks are all living in a integrated way like they do here, folks are just neighbors. One of those homes might be affordable and one of those homes might not be affordable, you know, might be a market rate home. It, they're, they're literally next door to each other. It's a really wide range of people. There's families, there's seniors, retired folks, there's some singles and couples without kids. Um, some of the folks I've met, one is a young gentleman who's an electrician, um, one is a nurse, one is a, a cop, policeman with APD. One is self-employed. One is a Christian missionary who works at one of the universities here in town. Today, I mean, all you have to do is read the national newspapers and you see Austin as one of the markets that's just gone crazy with a, what, a median home price of now half a million or something. Meanwhile, there are thousands of Austin households, you know, working and middle-class households going to work every day with a stable income and good credit score and who want to buy a home. There is no way you get homes built in Austin today for $200,000, which is kind of the middle price range of an affordable home here. So market rate homes are currently ranging from say 400, 450 up to a million. And so those folks are, you know, in professional careers with technology, doctors, attorneys, architects, some a lot of empty nesters, you know, folks who have downsized into Miller, had a home to sell and, you know, a, a pretty good retirement income have, have, have also made the move into Miller. We started with a program that had been experimented with around the country uh, called Shared Appreciation. And with time, we've now settled into a program where the home owners of the affordable homes um, agree to a 2% annual appreciation. Affordable buyers this is sort of a, a, a slightly different product than traditional home ownership. Traditional home ownership couldn't create a $200,000 home here in, in Miller. So with all the mechanisms that we have to pull, put to it, the resources um, and the builder's agreement to do this, we end up getting a $200,000 home. So then the buyer agrees to uh, uh, a covenant that it requires, that allows them 2% appreciation a year and, when, and, and the Miller Foundation maintains a right of first refusal. So we come in, when they're ready to sell, we exercise our right of first refusal, and we line up the next affordable buyer, and we go to closing. I'm so passionate about this program for really three reasons. First of all, working class, middle class Americans should be able to buy homes. Secondly, it makes it possible for Miller to be, have, make that opportunity available for future home buyers. So it's not a one-time thing where one lucky home buyer gets to own something and then gets a big windfall and that's the end of that. And the third is it demonstrates 
how this kind of development, this kind of mixed income development, is in fact possible and works over time. Because it's only right that America create housing that ranges from 200,000 on up, you know, that has this range of affordability. And this has proven that you can do that at scale and not just little projects here and there.